Hey guys, Liquid here, and welcome to Let's Play Spy Fox 2. Some assembly acquire, re re required. Somewhere in the Alps. So, Agent Gracefully, you're part of our spy exchange program from Canada? Try not to say my name too often. I'm trying to travel incognito. Actually, you're traveling in the Alps. What do you have there? I got something very important out of a smelly trash can. Well, of course it's smelly if you got it out of a trash can. You need a hobby. No, not smelly. Smelly! As in the society of meaningless evil larceny lying and yelling. Of course, our evil nemesis. Spy Fox, you've got to get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. No, I've got a better idea. I'd better get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Oh. I take this gadget from Professor Quack, the may need it. What is it? Dehydrated skis. The side of this little pill is a pair of skis. All you have to do is add water. And pray tell, why would I need a pair of skis? I came to get information, not recreation. You may need them to get away from those bad guys. Good luck, Spy Fox. Uh oh. Bad I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of let the uh, you know the, uh, the the intro cutscene here play out without really commenting on it, but um, I'll uh, talk a bit more once we actually get to some gameplay. Got water? Arrow escape from the evil pigmen. Uh oh. No, I can't actually remember. It's been a very long time since I played this game. Probably over 15 years, so. Look, hell, I was wondering if I was gonna have to. spring into action there. Uh oh. I've got to get out of here. Although this would be a nice getaway cottage, I've got to get this bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Okay, so basically, you know, I was I was wondering, I've been wondering, you know, what's the next scum game that I should play? You know, the, the next um, humongous entertainment game. You know, because you know, uh, I've done Freddy Fish. I've I've done mainly, I've pretty much done the first game in all the main you know series. You know, Freddy Fish, Spy Fox, Pajama Sam, Putt Putt, and after a lot of deliberation, I I've decided to do. Spy Fox 2 next. And so we got our, uh, you know, in the intro there, we kind of learned about the plot where, because we're going after Smelly. Um, I, I enjoyed that little joke about how, uh, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not incognito, we're in the Alps. Or whatever, that's pretty funny. But yeah, I used to play this game. This game, I'm pretty sure, it came out quite a while ago. Uh, I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head, but, um, Late 90s, early 2000s. Probably late 90s. And, you know, I used to play this back in the day. Uh, I probably have not played it, you know, since, you know, maybe 2002 or whatever. <laughs> this random, random, random guess, but I've, I probably not, have not played this in so long. But um, hopefully as I play it, my memory will slowly get get a uh, jogged or whatever. Uh, like even this, I, I, I honestly even being in like that. Uh, Any more time here is time misspent. I've got to get this bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Like we're just seeing the little the little pill here, you know, brings out memories. Um, but let's uh, actually quickly look, you know, because each of these games you have a little mini. You have a little mini game. Oh yeah, this was. Oh yeah, I remember. Things from space to get the old heart pumping. It's like each of these spy fox games had, had like a little mini game that you could play on your little spy watch. And here it's like a little shoot 'em up with a little. Uh... Yeah, I remember this. I, I remember. I remember this completely. Like we're, we're gonna end up getting um, you know, weapon upgrades. I gotta say though, I probably, 
for as much as I played this game, and this really I think applies to, you know, a lot of stuff that we enjoy when we're children, I, feel, I cannot imagine that I really was able to appreciate the dialogue, you know, when I first played it. I'm, I'm not sure if I really like this weapon here. Like, you can't actually... It's like... It's timed. Oh, hell, this, this one's pretty nice. Kind of a... area of effect. And I can't actually go further than this. I, I can't go further than... the... bottom half of the screen. But yeah, like, I feel like... when I used to play this back in the day as a, as a kid, I probably was not able... really able to, uh... appreciate the dialogue. Like, all the, um... like... Not information, recreation. Like I, I came here to get information, not recreation. Like I feel like I didn't know what recreation meant until honestly I was probably like eighteen. Like <laughs> there are a lot of other games, uh, you know, that are on this engine. This, uh, I guess, what you call the Scum engine. Like that are able to work on the scum emulator at least um, like uh, I, there were there were quite a few blues clues games that I used to play that I, I might do a let's play of them at some point um, what was this actually I think this might be like a, a bonus for all of our weapons oh nice look at that might, might have been like random or something and like, those Blue Clues games were definitely, you know, for children. Like, you know, they, they were made for young... for young children, and... were definitely, I think, made... you know, with... You know, a young audience in mind. Whereas these games here, you know, Spy Fox, Freddy Fish, Putt-Putt... to varying degrees... you know, they're more just, you know... you know... An adult, an adult watching Blue's Clues probably is not going to find m m much hidden meaning. I mean, there's not going to be money, you know, double entendres or clever wordplay that you know only an adult w would recognize. Whereas here, you know, that, 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 that type of stuff comes into play a lot more. Yes, I, I, I do intend to. We'll see how far we can get. Like, I'm curious. At least try to either beat the high score or get all the upgrades for the weapons. Well, three. Yeah, I really can't remember much about how this game. I, I've got like a very vague. memory of certain plot points that I'll uh, bring up when we get there. Because I was actually... Because, uh... Spy Fox 3... Oh, so this actually automatically shoots 2. Spy Fox 3 is called, uh, Operation Ozone. And when I was, like, in... The, when I was kind of getting in the mood to, you know, play uh, another humongous entertainment game... I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I should do Spy Fox 2, Operation Ozone. But then I realized, oh no, that's actually Spy Fox 3. And then... And so, I'm... A bit, a bit rusty on this one. Let's, let's get the... Let's get the... Uh, let's get... Let's beat 5,000, and then I'll... Stop this, because I imagine it might be... A little boring. And honestly, I don't really see it getting too difficult. <laughs> like, uh... Okay, we got... 5,000. Let's try to get at least one weapon. To level 3. Come on, game. I wonder if this actually just goes on forever. Like, I imagine... Eventually, there's gonna be like a, an end where it's like, hey, this is the score you got.
Trapped amid all the ice and snow, Spy Fox is just, you know, we're getting, we're increasing the speed a bit. Spy Fox is just playing with his little, his little watch. You know, Monkey Penny, getting nervous. Here's our final upgrade for the purple, the purple gun. This thing, honestly, this thing's kind of overpowered. Let just stand back. Let's um. Can I let us die? Things from space. How fun! It's a bucket of water. You know, obviously, point clicking adventure games. You know, some of the a lot of the fun is just clicking on stuff. So we look at our our map. Maybe we can see our little. That's not going to do me any good. Our little. St that won't do me any good. Smelly, smelly bag. Here's where my notes go. I use the talk balloons to gather information. Notes. Here's and where I our, keep my spot. Our gadgets. I think this here is for. Field command center. We can, we can call. For help. Oh, whoa. How's the mission going, Spy Fox? I have a valuable clue which I'm trying to get to you. Uh, what's keeping you? Don't tell me that you're trapped by some goons. You guessed it. Don't forget that you might have a gadget that may get you out of that jam. Forget the jam. How about out of this ski shack? Most definitely. Monkey Penny, out. We have a gadget, eh? As I imagine she's talking about our, our skis. These are... Uh... Imagine. If I was wearing skis, I bet I could escape from those goons down that Olympic ski jump. Uh, so that's the use a. Here's where I keep our little pill on the water. Water, work your magic. Get some skis. I was actually just watching some videos recently about them. Some of those. The dehydrated skis are now rehydrated. Those dehydrated toys where it's like you put this little capsule in the water and it turns into a dinosaur. Those those, those are kind of fun. Feet don't fail me now. Skis, I mean. Nice. Which way should I go? I'm going to I'm going to either go. Not sure if it makes a. Which way should I go? I wonder. If I... <laughs> I'm curious what would happen if we actually went. Right into their path. Oh. My Olympic ski ability. I bet I can ski right past those. Okay, let's do it then. Because yeah, since they had their back, you know, their back to us, so I, was, I kind of figured. Why should I go? Oh man, let's go. This ancient cave. There's so much stuff like this, so much art, so much to take in, so much nostalgia. Oh, fellow. Too afraid to make the jump. Oh. Did you miss me, Chief? So you've analyzed the trash bag, I see. And what have you found? It's a model box one one thousand scale for one evil robot. On the side, it says "Some Assembly Required." Sounds like an excellent title for one of my adventures. <laughs> it has a mailing label that reads to La Roche, care of Chateau La Roche, World's Fair. Hmm. Inside the box are assembly instructions. You'd better take these with you, Spy Fox. Wow, you can learn a lot by reading. If Smelly is in the that children up to their usual no goodness, you'd best go check out this World's Fair. Monkey Penny and Quack have already set up the mobile command center. I'm on my way, Chief. <laughs> Shh. 
spy box. Are you okay? Shaken, but not stirred, Monkey Penny. So it looks like we're on to something big. Yes, I think Smelly is up to some monkey business, Monkey Penny. And it looks like it's up to you, me, and Professor Quack to get to the bottom of it. Well, you and me, <laughs> you okay there, man? Monkey Penny, I brought the assembly instructions I got out of the Smelly trash bag. Well, of course it's Smelly if you got it out of a trash bag, Spy Fox. No, Monkey Penny, not Smelly. Smelly, as in the Society for Meaningless Evil, Larceny, Lying, and Yelling. Our evil nemesis. Why don't you leave those assembly instructions here with me? Then you can refer to them whenever you're back here at the Mobile Command Center. And remember, you can contact me via your spy watch at any time. Don't forget to check out the spy vending machine, Spy Fox. It's full of new gadgets for you to try out. I'm sure you'll find some of them quite useful. Thanks. Now I need to go get busy and go give that LaRoche at the Chateau LaRoche a visit and find out just what he's up to. That was quite the info dump. Like we've got quite the, uh, so we've found out that So what all did we learn there? We basically learned that, you know, there's some sort of instructions for creating like a giant robot in the uh, in that little s smelly bag. It's the assembly instructions for one evil dog bot made by the dog bot. Toy division. Yes, I do remember this dog bot. Like a uh, that, that is one of the plot elements that I remember from my childhood. Evil dog Actually, let's pause it. Let's look look at this thing, right? I feel like these, um, because uh, one of the things about Spy Fox, I can't remember if the other Humongous g games did it as well, but you know, you know, Spy Fox games would, would uh, have like some randomization uh, with like some of the items and like things you had to do. And I'm wondering if like, um, like this off code and this little uh, coughing thing here, they might, they might be different uh, depending on the playthrough, I can't remember. Made by Smelly Toy Division. This is a rather cool looking device. What is it? One of those novelty gadgets that lets you see what you'll look like in 50 years? It's an ID maker. Of my own creation, of course. It's for making identification cards. Fascinating. How does it work? You place a photo in the photo slot, choose an occupation, and any name you like, then press the Process ID button. A completed ID will pop out of the machine. Professor, you're amazing. What if I made an ID, but then I change my mind and want to make a different one? Well, if you don't like the ID you created, you could make another card. Just reset the name and occupation. Insert a new photo, then press the Process ID button again. That sounds like fun. Creating false ID cards is something only secret agents can do. And then only when we're on a case. Right! Yes, yeah, like, like, hey children, don't try this at home. But yeah, I imagine, like right now, we don't really have any use for that. Spy heat. This looks like some hot work. How does this gadget work, Professor Quack? Now this gadget, I'm really proud of. You can spray it on something, say like a thermometer, and watch the temperature rise right before your eyes. Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. You can say that again. All right. Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. <laughs> that's something I could see. I could see that potentially existing in real life. On the tummy. So we have. Like a few different options of uh, I mean, that's a lot of gadgets. We have we have four spaces. So I can't I can't remember exactly. We don't really know what we'll need yet. So I'm just gonna go. I just get the first four for now. If, if, if we need something else, we can always come back, but, um... I bet these are cool. Spy skates, they look sharp, Professor Quack. How do they work? 
I've always loved the grace and beauty of figure skating. But being in the spy biz never left time for the years of training, so I created these. You simply slip them on and insert a diagram of the skate maneuver you want to perform, and voila! The skates with you in them perform it perfectly. Well, those could sure help to put the villains on ice. Ah, right, Spy Fox. I like Basically, these new blueberry flavored blueprints. Robot those skates. Are the spy skates. If you, if you want to be like Tony Hawk, just get the skateboard version. Press the 900 button, and it'll do it for you. A spy key replicator can. What's the key to this gadget, Professor Quack? That's a one-shot camera, like no other in the world. It's specifically made for replicating keys. You take a picture of the key you want to replicate, then bake it in an oven. The picture shrinks down and hardens into an exact duplicate of the key you took the picture of. It can only be well, one picture at a time. But you can take a picture over another picture. If you bake a picture into the wrong key, just insert the key back into the camera and it will turn back into key film. I'm sorry, what did you say? Don't worry, it's a point and shoot easy bake gadget. First of all, I thought, I thought he meant that you would put the actual camera in the oven. I need my fiber. That's the spy key replicator can. That could be very useful and also very illegal. We have room for one more gadget. Some grenade. These. These, um. I'm not sure what you, what you call these, like. Clamps. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, a fork and spoon. And some sort of. Uh, megaphone. I, I. Like. These all look familiar. Like, I. Or whatever. Like, I've definitely. Like, these, these here, especially. Like, I, I remember using them, but, uh. Let's see what this grenade is. I can't remember, like, what they're actually used for. I'm sure this gadget isn't bug free, Professor Quack. How does it work? You've got to be careful with this one, Spy Fox. Toss it at something made of wood and get out of the way. It's good for one serious pulping. That's not something you want laying around the house. Not unless you're good friends with a carpenter. <laughs> These blueprints are an acquired taste I haven't acquired yet. <laughs> it's just like, it really, it really is. Like I, I, I know I've. I, I really just cannot like sing the, the game's praises enough. Like it's. Wonderful. <laughs> I think the writing is really good. Speaking of uh, termites, uh, I, I might make a video about this. Uh, I guess I like can actually stand alone video about this. It's fun to put bad guys behind bars. At some point. But I've been watching the Ant Man, the Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Um, and, I, and, I, and I do mean I've been watching it because, um, you know, I'm the type of person where I can't. Especially, like, if I'm in the comfort of my own home, I really cannot just sit down and watch a two-hour movie in one sitting. I uh, really... It, I have to, like, watch it, you know, in bursts. Or whatever. But I'm almost done with it. And I might, I might make a review or something. Uh, like, let me make a video, like, talking about my thoughts on it. Because this... Because I do have a lot of, you know, Marvel-related stuff on the channel. It says World's Fair Entrance. So we're hanging out in this little trailer, basically. But now that the game's pretty much begun, I think I'm going to call the video there. Folks, Till next time, hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, next time we'll hopefully see what's going, to, see what's going down at this World's Fair. But till next time, Liquid out.